Action. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get it next well, time. Was that not good? Well, no, the action's usually more of a director thing to say. Oh. But. I'm pretty self-directed. <laughs> It's peak tomato season right now, so I'm going to show you a recipe for Romesco pasta salad that uses some great farmer's market tomatoes. It has um, a really tangy dressing, some basil, some parm, and it's a really wonderful make-ahead dish for all of your summer potlucks and picnics. This recipe has a couple of different components that all come together at the end, and it's really about sort of a textural contrast with the pasta and this tangy kind of Romesco-inspired dressing, which is made from roasted red peppers, garlic, and usually almonds. I'm going to use the walnuts instead. So the first thing I want to do is prep my ingredients for my dressing and also toast a cup of walnuts. So the walnuts are going to be used in the kind of romesco dressing and also I'm going to save some and chop them to fold in at the end. So I have a cup here. These will go into a 350 oven to toast and they'll take about 10 to 12 minutes. I'm just looking for them to be a little bit darkened in color and very kind of fragrant and toasty smelling. Here I also have my big pot of uh, boiling water for the pasta and I'm just going to season it. This is kosher salt. We always use kosher salt for pasta. And I like to put in several tablespoons. So I just kind of eyeball it. So I use the food processor in this recipe a couple different times. The first thing I'm going to use it for is to make sort of uh, my fresh breadcrumbs. I have a loaf of country bread here. Uh, and I only need about three ounces of bread, but with the crusts removed. So I'll start by just using my bread knife to remove the outer crust. I think I'll need about a quarter of the loaf. Any kind of like white sourdough, Pullman would work. Um, you could use a whole grain bread, but I like sort of the um, density of just a country loaf. So I'm going to use the food processor to break this up into fresh breadcrumbs, but before that I just want to cut it into one inch pieces to give the food processor a little head start. So I'm going to measure this out and weigh it. Um, if you don't have a scale at home and you don't have any way of sort of knowing what the weight of bread is, that's fine. You're just ultimately trying to get to a cup of fresh bread crumbs at the end. I'm going for about three ounces of bread, which cut into pieces this size will be a, around a cup and a half. So into the food processor. Now I just pulse it. If I were to process the whole thing, I would kind of make, it would kind of turn into a paste. So I'm just pulsing it to break up those large pieces. And then once everything's broken up, I can process it. So I'm going for coarse crumbs here. I don't want them to disappear into the pasta salad. So this is looking good. You can see I have some finer pieces and some slightly larger pieces. I don't want to go much finer than this. I'm going to transfer these to a bowl. So the walnuts are almost done. Um, I'm going to jump over and start the dressing. So I have some jarred roasted red peppers here for whole. I'm going to start with my lemon. The acid in this recipe comes from lemon juice. I'm going to first zest the lemon and save that for my breadcrumbs later on. So I have my microplane. I have, sometimes I see people microplaning like this. My method is to kind of use it the other direction, but either way it works. So usually one medium lemon like this will yield a couple of teaspoons of finely grated zest. And then I'm going to cut the lemon in half and juice it. I can go right into the food processor. I can smell that the nuts are toasted. So I'm going to pull these out of the oven. You can see that they've taken on a nice golden hue. And you can't smell them, but they have a really kind of deep roasted uh, aroma. So I'll let these cool off. So about a quarter of these go into the uh, dressing. So I, you know, you can just eyeball it. It's not too precise. So that looks about right. Uh, and then the rest I'll save, and once they're cool, I'll chop them, and those go into uh, the pasta salad. So in, a, in the dressing, I have the lemon juice from the lemon, the four whole roasted red peppers just from a jar, two whole raw garlic cloves, a half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, so that gives a little bit of heat. I found that with pasta salads, when you're serving a pasta dish cold like this, you have to really... Um, it, it really needs a super flavorful dressing because the sort of the colder temperature kind of tamps down some of the flavors. So in go the walnuts. So I have a half a cup of oil. Feels like a lot, but it's a lot of pasta with a lot of surface area. So it needs that, um, that volume to coat everything. Uh, 
And once this mixture is smooth, I'll start to process it, I'll stream in the oil. I also love the kind of like reddish orange hue that it gives the whole pasta salad. It feels very summery with the tomatoes and the, the contrast from the basil. So into the feed tube, I'll just stream in the oil. And by streaming in slowly, it'll emulsify the dressing so it's thick and even has sort of like a light airiness to it. It also makes a lot of dressing and that's because cold pasta has a tendency to like really absorb a lot of liquid and moisture. So we have to make a lot of dressing so that even after the pasta salad's been sitting out for a little while, it still has kind of like a nice sauciness. Now I'm just gonna season with a little bit of kosher salt. I can put that back in my measuring cup where I had the oil. Now I'm gonna take my breadcrumbs over to the stove and start to crisp those and, turn, and get them nice and golden in a pot. And I'm also gonna cook my pasta. So this shape I love for this pasta salad. We call for fusilli gigante in the recipe and that is just like an extra large kind of corkscrew shape. So anything that's kind of in that family will work. You could use like medium shells would be really nice, but what I love about this big corkscrew shape is how well it catches all of the, not only all the sauce, but all of those other components in there, like the chopped walnuts and the breadcrumbs and everything. While my pasta's cooking, I'm also gonna crisp my breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna bring the breadcrumbs and my lemon zest over to the stove. Set that here. So very often, um, when we give a pasta recipe, we say to undercook your pasta, and that's because you end up cooking it more in the sauce over the stove. Unlike those recipes, we're not cooking the pasta again, it's being served cold, so you wanna cook it fully in your water, even a little bit past al dente, because as it cools down, the pasta will firm up. So into the water. This doesn't have a time on it, I'm gonna check it after about 12 minutes. It's a pretty thick pasta shape, so I think it'll take a little while. So I'll set my timer, and occasionally I'll give this a stir, Okay, so that's going, and then I'm gonna turn, put some heat under this saucepan. Oh, but that clicking stops. No? <laughs> All right, we'll go, we'll go to this burner. So I'll get medium heat under this saucepan. Then I have two tablespoons of olive oil. Once the oil's hot, and you can tell because it will shimmer a little bit across the surface, in go the breadcrumbs. And I also toast the breadcrumbs with another half teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes and then that finely grated lemon zest from the lemon. So you want to keep this moving in the, in the pot because if you kind of let it sit, oftentimes you'll get some burning around the edges. We just want to let this go until the breadcrumbs are turning golden brown and start to crisp. And then while I'm over here, an occasional stir into the pasta. Yeah, you can do that. I'm not really doing either one very well. I'm actually extremely left-handed, like extremely left-dominant. Can't do anything with my right hand. These are just about there. Your nose is a good indicator. They are turning golden and also smelling very toasty. So I'm gonna pull these off. They'll also continue to darken a little bit, especially in this hot pan. Uh, so I'll tr transfer them back into this bowl and bring back over to the station with me. So it's been 10 minutes. I want to show you a test for pasta doneness that, I mean, obviously you can just taste it. Um, but one thing you can look for is, hold on, I have to go back over there. Follow me over there. Sorry. <laughs> so if you cut into the pasta, you'll often see, if it's not quite done yet, there's like a little white core. And if I taste it, I'm not quite done. When I was a kid, I loved eating raw pasta. It was weird. I don't know why. That, I don't know why that was enjoyable. Okay, someone's calling me. Hold on. No, I don't know who it is. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> it's not my mom. <laughs> my mom does call me in the middle of the day, though. She's like, oh, I'm so glad you answered. Where do you think I am? Okay, over to the pasta. So at this point, it's fully cooked. None of that starchy ring in the middle. I'm going to go drain it. Follow me back over to the sink. So normally I would never rinse pasta because the pasta has this kind of starch coating on it. And in a hot pasta dish, you want that starch there to help thicken the sauce. But actually it works against you in this recipe because it will really tighten up that liquid and kind of turn the sauce 
a little bit pasty and thick, and I don't want that to happen. I want to keep it nice and loose and coating the pasta. Then I'll shake that off. Also, I didn't mention this before, but this is one pound of pasta. I have a giant bowl, and in goes the pasta. And a bowl this size is really helpful because there's a lot of ingredients to toss together. So at this stage, I'm gonna to toss the pasta with ha about half of the dressing. I'm not adding all the dressing for a couple of reasons. One, over time, the pasta will really kind of absorb that dressing and, and kind of turn it a little bit dry. So I'm reserving half to toss through at the end. Um, but it's actually a good thing that it's gonna absorb a lot of those flavors because that's gonna help season everything. Okay, so now I have all my components here that are going into the pasta salad. I'm gonna start by chopping my parm. So it's four ounces of parm, that's a nice generous amount. I'm the person in the grocery store because parm is really expensive, so I'm the person who looks through every single pre-wrapped piece for the piece that has the smallest amount of rind. So I feel like I'm getting the most for my money. I think my dad would be proud. You know, there's a lot of different kind of grades of parm, and I love the parm that has those big crystals in it, like this. So you, you kind of can taste them as, you're, as you crunch down on them. Same with the breadcrumbs. I like having all the pieces be kind of irregular. I'm not like chopping them into perfect cubes. Also, sometimes I'm lazy and I kind of just find, if I already have the knife and cutting board, at, board out, I just find it easier to chop than getting out like a box grater. I'm gonna move this off to the side. And now do my walnuts, same thing. When you chop nuts, you kind of inevitably get some bits that like turn to dust. My favorite part of this recipe, the tomatoes. They have this big, beautiful bowl of heirloom tomatoes and I need about a pound. You could use cherry tomatoes, it's fine. Um, that would be great. You, um, I like using heirlooms because you can kind of cut them into these nice irregular shapes. So that's, a, each one of these is about a half pound. I think I like the idea of using different colors. A pound. The tomatoes do so many things in this recipe. They add a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of acid, um, and, and I think most importantly, like that juiciness. So when you bite into it, it kind of marries with the rest of the pasta salad. We have all of our components here. All you have to do is finish assembling. So at this point, if you did all of this prep, you could just throw some plastic on top of the pasta salad and let it sit here for several hours. Obviously keep the basil in the fridge so it doesn't wilt. So I'm gonna add the rest of the dressing. And I'm adding the dressing before I'm adding the rest of the ingredients because I don't actually want the dress, I want the dressing to coat the pasta, not so much everything else. So I'm gonna add the tomatoes, the nuts, and the parm. Now breadcrumbs, sprinkle these on top. And I know I said it before, but I just love the way the breadcrumbs in particular kind of work their way into the grooves of the pasta. Basil. And at this point, I'll just kind of gently fold all these things through. I don't want to bruise the basil too much. Now I'm ready to make a plate. A couple of basil leaves on top. And then just a final sprinkle of breadcrumbs. Andy, yeah. do you want to taste a little pasta salad? Pork cruised with, no, pasta salad with romesco sauce. Mm -hmm. Fresh tomato. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah, right? We finally get to eat tomatoes when it's tomato season, which for us is kind of a rare thing. It's very refreshing. I love this shape. Yeah. It's so fun. I hope you try this really fun um, summer side to bring to all of your barbecues and picnics, and it's a great way to use up all of those awesome tomatoes at the farmer's market. So, thanks for watching. Yeah, we would eat like strands of spaghetti. It was so nice. Really? It was so crazy. Or like, yeah, yeah. I, was like, Why? I think my parents would just be like, "You're annoying us. We're trying to make dinner. Chew on this." And I'd be like, "Okay." <laughs>